Well, if you're going to be doing any kind of freelancing, number one, so you need to do your market research. You need to go out there and find out, is there a demand for what you're going to be offering? Because uh, the, the last thing you want to do is spend one, two, three months as trying to start a business, you know, going through all the headaches of, of getting everything started and then to find out that nobody uh, has a problem that you're solving. And welcome to a new episode of Digital Coffee Marketing Brew. And I'm your host, Brett Dyster. And you guys know, just subscribe to the podcast. It does help out and never miss an episode because it's only once a month. So you might actually forget every once in a while. But anyways, I have Kevin with me, and he is a founder and lead trainer of Optimal Performance Academy, and he's worked with small business owners to and startups to help them just gain traction in their business, because we all know it's hard to start up a business, and usually most of them fail within the first five years, so he helps them all with that as well. He's also been self-employed since 2004, which we're going to be talking about freelancers because it's a big market right now. And a lot of businesses are trying to find freelancers. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people want to know, how do you do this thing that's called freelancing? Because it's not an easy task to do. But he's also has lived in Las Vegas, but he now currently resides in North Carolina. So welcome to the show, Kevin. Well, thank you. It's great to be here, Brad. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And the first question I ask all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? I'm a tea drinker. And, and here's here, and here's a funny thing I note about that. I was in the Navy for uh, almost five years, and and I've never in my entire life have ever had a cup of coffee. Mm. So I'm definitely a tea drinker. So you've never been curious to try it to see what the obsession is with coffee? I, I, well, I tasted it once um, when I was in Alaska at the airport uh, on a stopover, and I got an Irish coffee, which is basically Irish whiskey with coffee in it. And when I drank the first sip of that, like, oh, my gosh, I cut through this. <laughs> so that's that was a, like a $5 wasted drink right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Actually, no, coffees are now about $5. Never mind. That's not expensive anymore. That's about normal. <laughs> well, this is the 90s, so or the 80s, actually, the late 80s. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Back then, that was pretty, actually pretty expensive. But uh, and also one other thing: what type of teas do you like? Do you like like green tea, black tea? Like what types of teas do you usually drink? Uh, green tea and black. I mean, green tea is probably my favorite. And black tea, I used to drink an ice an iced chai latte, um, but that, that that right now has too much sugar in it or too much caffeine in it, so I, I stopped drinking those. But yeah, yeah, you like green tea. Or if I drink a regular brown tea, or uh, it's, it's usually going to be ice. Nice. And I gave a brief introduction to your expertise, but can you can you give a little bit more to our listeners about what you do? Uh, sure. Um, in 2021, I was making a transition in my life. I was because I was in real estate. I was a real estate consultant for a few years, and then became a realtor for a few years. Um, in 2020, at the uh, toward the end of the whole COVID thing, I wrote my fourth book called "Launch the A to Z in Creating a Successful Business." And with that being said, uh, 2021 was my kind of a transition year. I was not quite sure what I was going to be doing. And then when I moved to uh, North Carolina in 2022, that's when I decided, like, you know what? I, I've known a lot of people try to start a business, realtors especially, uh, and they have they, they they are starting a business with a nine to five uh, corporate America mentality, and it, and that just doesn't work. And so what I decided to do was I was actually I created my company, which is called Optimal Performance Academy. And I wanted to start taking some of the stuff I wrote in my fourth book, my book, my book launch, and make that into uh, training courses, coaching programs, consulting programs. So that's what. So I formed the academy to be a place for people to come to get an education, albeit through one of our online courses, through our consulting uh, uh, practices, attending our workshops or our webinars that, that we uh, conduct. So what I'm hearing is you got out of the real estate business right before it started turning really, really bad because 2021 was still pretty good. And then 2022 is kind of like, okay, interest rates are really, really high and no one really wants to buy anymore. Exactly. Actually, I got out in January 2020, uh, two months before uh, the entire world shut down. Oh, yeah, that was pretty smart, actually, because actually, no, real estates were, were still going. They were just a lot harder to do. That's what that's what it was because 
I, to my understanding, showing of houses was, was difficult because if nobody knew how how, how uh, COVID was uh, transferred, they didn't know by touching a doorknob or um, and uh, and people say anything that you touch uh, could have COVID on it. And then um, one thing I joked around with some people about it's like, what's the one thing that everybody touches but you never think about uh, that you're touching it? Doorknob. Money. Oh. That's true. So you mean say this this walk down this door now or, or then you're gonna buy something and you gonna pull out five one dollar bills and you know and, and a twenty and you give it to a cashier and then that goes to the next one like and like money to me at that time was like one one of the scariest things to touch because everybody nobody thought about money people were just talking about uh, handles and and other things like that uh, at the beginning. That's fair. I mean, we don't use money as much anymore, but yeah, the, it transfers to a lot of different hands. And you never really know who's touching it or who's not. <laughs> exactly. And even if you do a paint with plastic, I mean, it, it, uh, uh, back then, that's before uh, they really had the little, you know, the, 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 the scan and go uh, style. I mean, I, I think it was, it was somewhat popular, but it wasn't like hugely popular at that time. Yep. No, you're right. But uh, speaking about freelancing, just like what has changed with the freelancing market? Because as we were talking about the pandemic, it kind of became like this, like really, really popular thing. It got really good in the limelight because all businesses are like, Oh, we can hire freelancers because we don't really know if we can come back into the, our business. We don't really know how many people we can actually hire back. So like what has changed between that, between the pandemic and now post pandemic in 2023? Well, well, in my opinion, one of the biggest things that, that changed was that people uh, um, decided to go online. And so, I mean, they're starting to do having uh, Zoom calls or or um, Skype for business because I did that for a little while. Um, or people will get on uh, some of the other platforms, which eventually became like a Microsoft uh, Meet or Team Meet or whatever it's called. And so people got used to working online. And then the second thing is, even if you had a job, a lot of people, they had to uh, work from home. They had to do... Um, you know, that so they got used to the um, to the idea of, uh, of working from home. Now a, a lot of people also lost their jobs uh, because when when stores shut down, when hair salons shut down, and they can't uh, and restaurants shut down, a lot of people were out of uh, uh, were out of employment. And since there was really nobody hiring, it's people had, some people had actually uh, took the advantage of that situation and actually started creating their own business online. So I think uh, COVID did actually inspire a lot of entrepreneurs to begin a, a, a new business because the, the people got used to doing things online. It's like uh, one of the ideas of me having an online course and making a series of online courses four years ago, I probably never would have thought about that. Just, I mean, I would have said, well, everything has to be done live. Everything has to be done in person. I never would have thought like, hey, let's, let's, let's do this thing and let's have a, 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 a call where everybody's uh, talking through their microphones and camcorders. Everybody started a podcast, but apparently the podcasting is actually down this year because everybody went back to work. <laughs> well, and, and that's yeah, exactly. And as people were actually going back to the workplace, because at that time I was living in Las Vegas and it was so scary because all the casinos shut down and some of the casinos didn't have doors. So they had to go board, uh, board up the, the, the board up the board up the entrances. So it, it was really weird. I mean, I walked, I once when I walked in, walking on the strip and there's not a single person in sight. And I, I took several pictures uh, of that. Like, and people look at, look at it, it's like, you were looking at the Venetian uh, fountains and there's not a single car on the road and not a single person there. I'm the only one there. Now, of course the fountains aren't going off because there's nobody to see it. <laughs> they want to look at it. But uh, it was, it was, it was really, really odd. And I remember at that time, that this this is why, why I started writing my book in two, the late 2020 was because of everything was changing. Everybody was, you know, what, I guess the thing was, what is the new normal, as they were saying? Gotcha. And for people like wanting to do it, wanting to start out, want to be new, like what are some tips for the new freelancers that are like, I really want to do this. This sounds like a great idea. You can work for yourself kind of sort of, but it sounds great because I don't have a boss. So I mean, what are some good tips for them and some realistic expectations to understand about freelancing? 
Well, if you're going to be doing any kind of freelancing, number one, obviously, you need to do your market research. You need to go out there and find out, is there a demand for what you're going to be offering? Because uh, the, the last thing you want to do is spend one, two, three months as trying to start a business, you know, going through all the headaches of, of getting everything started and then to find out that nobody uh, has a problem that you're solving. Um, the other thing is, yes, you're, you're now your own boss um, in this particular case, and that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. Uh, a joke that I've, I've heard around the entrepreneur community for years was a true entrepreneur is willing to work twice as hard to make half the money. And that's going to be true uh, in, uh, in many cases, because when you're just starting out and you're trying to get your first customers or clients, uh, you're going to be working really, really hard. You may be putting in an eight or 10 or 12 hour day. You may be working seven days a week. You may be working on a holiday, on a national holiday. I mean, that's just, that, is, that is just kind of expected. But once you start getting your momentum going, then you can start uh, creating systems that will make things a lot easier or start hiring other people out and other people to do some of the stuff that you don't want to do, like a virtual assistant or, or we call them a VA, a virtual assistant or a part-time employee or even a full-time employee, depending on what your income is and what it is that you're going uh, that, that you don't want to be doing. As an example, say you're building your business and you need a, and you need a website, but you know nothing about how to build a website. Well, you you hire a a, a freelancer to to build your website, or now just use AI because now there's actual websites that use AI to build your own website. <laughs> well, that's an, another thing is you can, uh, anybody that's starting out right now, you know, in this day and age, you need to be able to embrace all the new technologies. Don't be afraid of new technology because if you don't ad adapt to that new technology, you're going to get left behind, literally. And the joke I, I often tell people about this, especially when we talk about AI, is that let's say you you had a business, let's say you had a, a brick and mortar business, you had a bicycle shop, whatever, and, and this would be a few years ago, and you refuse to go online. I mean, I only want to, to do business with people I can actually shake their hands. I want somebody that I can physically touch. Well, you, you're going to lose a lot of your market share because if you can sell your bikes online and, and ship them, then I mean that's just an, that just be another avenue. But if you did adopt that new technology of having a, an online business as well, you're going to get left behind. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like there's things like Descript that will do, like take out the ums and uhs, and, you, and it's actually pretty good in the audio. I've used it before, and it also can do editing through just words. But also, you have like. AI type of things for I'm talking about podcasting specifically that can write your own show notes that can write all this stuff for you. So I use it so I know how to do it, but also it just automates my workflow way quicker than me doing all the writing and everything else that I need to do because I rather have some things automated than have nothing automated because it, it just cuts down the time. I can focus on things that I need to focus and not the things I don't need to focus on. Uh, absolutely. I mean, when I had a podcast back in 2017 and 18, and it was an interview-based show, and I ran it for right, right about a year, I, I, I had 59 episodes, but I did edit every single audio, uh, and my shows are like 45 to 60 minutes long, so I did edit all the audio. If I stutter, anybody stutter, like, you know, you know when you start a sentence and then you repeat that, that thing, all that came out, all the breathing came out, all the ums and uhs came out. So a 45 minute show took literally four to about four hours to edit. But if, if with new technologies now, and here it is, you know, five or so years later, and you can take and that cuts that down, then that makes having a podcast more enjoyable because you're not doing all the that te that tedious work of of doing the audio of doing the uh, audio editing. Mm. And so in whatever market freelancers should just embrace the AI. Cause I've heard that the, for marketing specifically, it's those that understand how to use AI will keep their jobs. And those that don't understand how to use it will lose their jobs. That's uh, depending on where, uh, what the business is. Yes, as, as businesses adapt to new technology, uh, again, you know, as an entrepreneur, you, you need to adapt with it. But if you're still working at a job like that, then you need to adapt to that as well, because otherwise you're going to become uh, obsolescent. Well, except for the ho Hollywood, because <laughs> they're fighting That's to keep fun. AI out. <laughs> yes. Well, if you talk about like uh, copyright infringement, is, is what I'm thinking about with the Hollywood stuff. Like, if I was an extra in a in a uh, in a scene in a movie, and now they're going to use my likeness in other scenes, I, but I don't get paid for it, then yeah, I feel that is uh, more like a copyright infringement, or per even a personal uh, infringement. 
It's true. A lot of those AIs that do use like pictures or do videos will just copy whatever they find on the internet and then create a new one in a way, but it's still like, it's still a close copy of whatever is out there to a certain extent. And uh, how should freelancers market themselves? So they use social media, LinkedIn, like what, what is the best Avenue? Because I mean, you could say you're a freelancer, but if you get no gigs and you don't actually advertise yourself, are you really a freelancer? It's kind of like if the reef falls in the woods, <laughs> does anybody hear it? Right. Well, definitely you want to use social media uh, 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 to the best uh, extent that you can and use the social media platforms that uh, that your potential clients are going to be on. For an example, if I'm trying to attract uh, uh, business owners, I'm probably not going to go to TikTok. I'm probably not going to go to Instagram. I'm, I'm mainly focusing on LinkedIn. If I was uh, po uh, posting uh, images of travels and stuff like that, then maybe I'll go to Pinterest or Instagram or, or Facebook. So wherever your potential clients are mainly, that's the kind of social media that you're going to be, uh, the platforms that you want to be on. One and one of the other things, that, and I don't, and I realized this back in two thousand and nine, is that I don't care what your colors are, you know, your your brands, uh, your brand colors are. I don't care about you know, you know, what is your logo looks like. You know, that's all good. That's all fine and dandy. Everybody needs a, their their corporate colors. Everybody goes need their own logo. But one of the other things for a small business owner, a and I'm talking about the solopreneur or what also I like to call a bipreneur. If you're if there's two people working together. One of the main, one of the other main things, part of your brand is this here. It's your face, and because the thing is, there's a, there's this old saying: people only do business with people who, who they know, like and trust. And one of the ways for people to get get to know you, get to like you, and get to trust you is to see you. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you may go to Starbucks and, and buy the coffee, and you got the little green and white. I think it's called a siren um, for the for their logo. But if if this was your own coffee company, your own business, you probably want to be doing some uh, some YouTube videos. You you want to be uh, getting your face out to the public, and that to me is one of the most important things uh, out there. Because um, for an example, when I was in, in two thousand and nine. I was attending a, a a real estate conference somewhere in California, and there was maybe four or five hundred people uh, in attendance, and they were giving away two raffle tickets or two door prizes. I won the second door prize, and that one item probably at that time cost two to three hundred dollars, um, but um, but it was revolutionary at that time. And what it was, it was a if you remember this, this is two thousand nine we're talking about. It was it was a flip camcorder. What that was is, is, is a, it's a little rectangular device. Mine was green and white. A little rectangular device that will record up to one hour of video or multiple videos, maximum of one hour. And then you have this little knob on the left hand side, a little slide button on the on, on the side that you that you click down on. It'll flip out a USB thing that you, that you could plug into your computer. In 2009, I started started shooting video of all the houses I was representing. Over the course of maybe. I don't know. Um, I stopped shooting video like that in like 2019. So over the over the course of that 10 or 11 years, I probably shot over 500, maybe 600 videos. I would say the first three or 400 was was on that flip camcorder. Before technology, uh, cell phones got to the point where you, your cell phone could do it. But at that time, that was revolutionary, and and people got to know who I was. I, and my my after a few months, my business skyrocketed. And secondly, to, uh, talking about this, and this is another little tip, is when you put your videos up on YouTube, always make sure that you have a link going to your website with the keywords that you want to be known for. So because, because the thing is, after some time, you, if you got 100, 200 videos, 300 videos, uh, or just call them backlinks going to your website, that's going to build up your branding as well as your SEO, uh, as well as your SEO. So when people are Googling the, 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 the words that you're using, the keywords that you're using, you will start coming up on page one or page two of Google. So uh, these are all things that you need to be doing. And if you're, and my, my, uh, answer to your question is to say, well, I, I don't look good on film or I don't like shooting video myself. My answer to that is get over it. Do it anyway. <laughs> After a time, almost nobody is good at video. To be honest with you, um, uh, uh, Brett, when I, whenever I shoot video of, let's say, of an ad or a new program that I'm doing, it takes me three or four, sometimes five takes to get it done right. I mean, Everybody, I mean, do you think every actor in every movie or TV show never, uh, do, they think, do you think they take more than one take? 
Of course. So why you why would you be any different? <laughs> so everybody messes up on video. And the thing is, once you record it and you edit it, all those bad things, they're all go- they, they all get thrown away. Yeah, to be fair, the first few years of listening to my voice was rough. I hate listening to it. <laughs> but you get I over it. I was it. the same way until I started editing my podcast. <laughs> I don't hear my voice all the time. <laughs> no, that was actually editing. I hated I had to edit my own stuff. and I, Not anymore, but at that time, I just did not li- like listening to myself. So you have to get over it, basically, is what I would say. For your YouTube thing, they're actually changing it. So I want to update the listeners where they're not allowing links anymore. You have to actually put it in your profile page now because they are banning links because of all the scams for crypto and everything that's happening. So that's not here yet, but you can put 10 to 12 links now. So they're changing the profile around. So you're going to have to do it through there, unfortunately. So it's a great thing for getting rid of scams. It's a terrible thing for us because then we have to point them back to our profile to get them to click on the link. Yeah, that, that, well, that, hopefully the algorithms on, uh, on Google and those other search platforms will, uh, will adjust for that as well. Because that, that's to me, that's one of the, that's how you, uh, back then, because of all the videos that I had going to my website and all the stuff I had on my website, my website was changing almost on a daily basis. Um, after like a, a year of doing that, if, if you saw somebody typed in my keyword, which was lease option, a lease option Las Vegas, I would be on, on page one on Google at least five times. And at least two of them were YouTube videos. Yeah. I just want to update you and our listeners as well, because I try to keep up to date with all that stuff. But yeah, it, I haven't seen it yet, but it is coming, unfortunately, because of all the scams of people posting links into their comments and everything else. YouTube's like, we're, we're, we're done with this. Like we can't keep up with, cause they can't, I mean, you're, you would literally have to have like seven AIs to keep up with all the scamblings going in through comments and everything else through that. So they're doing it this way. So I think the first four links, they'll be noticeable and then you'll have to click on the more to find the other eight links. So I would say for, for people, freelancers, anybody else, put your first important links the four on top of there so they're easily clickable. Then whatever else you have, just put it below. You re- basically have to prioritize, kind of like when MySpace with your top eight, when that was, when, when MySpace was popular, you're going to have to prioritize like that. Like, what's my most important links? Well, then it should be, therefore, would be your website and then your whichever social media platform um, that, yeah. you're, that you want to be known for, LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever. Yeah. And then going back, I mean, to your YouTube videos and stuff, that was basically a portfolio. So that could actually help freelancers too, of like having what, depending on their industry, what portfolio that they want to showcase. So in a way videos can help bring a familiarity, but also have a portfolio of your knowledge and just your camera work. If you're in that industry. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah, definitely. definitely. Hey, I'm and then, make one, one more note. Cause this is this is a pet peeve of mine. So, uh, uh, and you, you cut me off if you, if you need to, Brad. Is the, whenever you go, whenever you shoot video or even pictures, that is, you need to be completely aware of which platform you're going to be putting it on. Because if you're going to shoot for TikTok and Instagram, you should be in vertical or portrait mode. If you're going to be on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, you need to be in landscape or uh, uh, horizontal mode. And the reason being is Instagram and, and 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 TikTok are designed to be, I'm talking in front of my camera and you're holding it in the palm of your hand, while the other ones, because uh, while the other ones are more like to, to fit your TV screen or your laptop screen. So if you've ever seen any, uh, let's say you watch the news, it doesn't matter which one you watch, and somebody's filming, and they're showing somebody filming an event, and you're watching it on your horizontal screen, and you got you're only seeing half of your screen, the middle half, and everything's blurry on the side. That's somebody that you put in, that is a uh, shot in the wrong direction for for the platform that they're uh, trying for. So I would say by default, um, always shoot in the horizontal mode, and then you can go uh, vertical mode if you're going to do Instagram or TikTok. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the uh, editing softwares now will allow you to do either one. You'll just have to like either blow it up a little bit. But if you have a good camera, it won't really matter. No one will really know. So, yes, you should be aware of where you're shooting if you're doing it live. But if you're doing a pre-recording, you can just go to DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut. They have all the dimensions for you. There's also a few AI stuff. Uh, There's a video one online where you can put transcripts, but also will put it in the 
whatever format you need to put it in as well. So there's options now where you don't have to like cognitively think about it. You can just shoot in vertical and then or horizontal and then it will change the vertical or square or whatever you need to do. If you're going from vertical to, uh, to horizontal, then you're zooming in, have to zoom in really tight. And and if you're on horizontal going to vertical, you're just cutting off the edges. Yeah, I would recommend if you're going to do like different formats, use like a DSLR. Uh, I know Panasonic just released one where it has like open gate. So basically it has a wider, so it has a more up and down for your shots. So you can do the vertical without losing too much of it because a lot of times it'll just be, but with open gate, you can actually have more of the sensor pick up more of the up and downness of it. So when you do do the vertical stuff or you transfer it to vertical, it won't be as blown up. But if you're using a professional DSLR, like I am, you really won't notice the difference because they're 4k anyways. <laughs> but Moving on, do you have any, do you have some tips for, let's say they're getting going, do you have some tips for freelancers to like continue this? Because I'm pretty sure the start is hard, but also the continuation of doing freelancing is just as hard because you're like, okay, I kind of made it, now what? Well, I mean, if you're getting started, make sure that you uh, that you do know who your target market is. I mean, that's the last thing is, if you're one of those people that says everybody is your client or everybody could be your client, then that you need to focus more. Um, so you definitely need, I need that. Uh, if you're, as you were just saying, if you, you know, you've got, everything is going well, sometimes, you know, you get to that point, maybe you're um, an upper five or so or lower uh, six figure uh, earner. Um, then, then at that time, you can start looking at what uh, Tim Ferriss said in his book, uh, you know, before I work with you, have this important deal, do you is that we can, uh, uh, I love that. I love that acronym because if you're doing a lot of stuff uh, and, and you're doing well, start growing your business, start hiring your those VAs, start hiring employees, part time, independent contractors, you know, whatever it is. And I would say talk to an attorney before you start doing that. Just make sure, making sure you have all the paperwork set up uh, properly and correct. Yes, yeah, so all legal would probably be a really good imperative because you don't want to get yourself in trouble. Well, because the thing is, if you because uh, we start hiring people, you're going to have to have uh, some uh, corporate policies, and one of the things you don't want to have it in there is maybe a race or something that could be considered racist. So you want to make sure that um, that you are treating everybody and setting everything up about property. So just go talk to a business attorney uh, on something like that. Got you. And it leads to my next question: What should freelancers avoid when doing all this stuff? Because we talked about like great tips, but avoiding is just as important as what you should be doing. Um, well, I would say avoid just doing something to be uh, just to be busy. I mean, just creating a busy work for you um, uh, is often going to be a, a waste of time and a waste of money as well. So you want to make sure that you are strategic in uh, in your day to day activities as well as your week to week activities. So avoid just doing busy work. Hmm. I mean, what would that entail for busy work? Because I know every I mean, every industry is different. Is like busy work just doing small tasks? Is it just like updating a website you don't need to update like what would be considered busy work i guess in a broad sense doing things like that just you know it is it's just getting in your day and it's not something that's critical that needs to be done uh so that could be uh, put off later or completely eliminated is it just you know stop doing that kind of stuff so you know focus on how do you find your clients how do you serve your clients uh what you know what services that you that, that you may be needing as well as the you know is there any additional education that you're going to be needing as well like either hiring a coach or a consultant like myself or taking a, a course or um in some in some industries, you have what's called CE courses or continuing education courses. Uh, so you know, make sure that you that you keep yourself open uh, for that. You know, uh, in additional education. Mm. And what is the best advice you ever gotten for like for life or like freelancing from somebody that you know? Uh, best advice. That's a hard one. Um, there, there, there's so many good nuggets out there. Um, I'll give you top five if that helps. Well, I I would say number one, make sure that whatever you're doing is something that you love. 
and because because you you're, you're getting married to, uh, to your uh, to your company um and essentially what i you know what i say about that is and this is even for the, those of you are listening that have jobs uh is if i ask you what would your what what, what is your favorite time of the week and you, if you say five o'clock on friday with a nine to five friday monday to friday job then you're not in the right place if you're if you say 8 59 a.m on a monday morning then you're in the right place because you got to love what you uh, what you do Nice. And where can people find you online? Well, we, our academy does have a website. Uh, it's called uh, optimalperformanceacademy.org. Uh, again, it's optimalperformanceacademy.org. And on there, on our front page, you'll see our, a link to our classes. Uh, also, how you can uh, schedule a, 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 a 60 minute strategy session with me. Um, and also on there, you'll see all the other stuff, our workshops and other stuff that, that's coming up. Um, and, or you can find me online. Again, I prefer to be on LinkedIn because that's where the business people are. And it's just my name. So it'll be linkedin.com uh, forward slash I N the forward slash Kevin A. Dunlap. Nice. And any final thoughts for listeners? Um, I would just say, you know, just remain open as well as uh, adapt to new technologies. I mean, uh, whenever a new technology comes out, see how you can use that in your business. Like with AI, now you're going to use AI to help you start writing um, parts of your website. You're going to have it come up with titles of your of your courses. You're going to have it come up with slogans or just start using AI. And when I say AI, and you're coming up with, like, say, a slogan, for an example, always ask, like, say, chat GPT or Bard or Brad, whatever it is for Google, um, to give you at least four or five different variations. That way you yes, it stuck is. with it. With yeah, it, it is called Bard. So you were right the first time. Bard, okay. And any, um, actually, no, that was the that was the final thoughts. But thank you, Kevin, for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew and sharing your knowledge on freelancing. It's been my pleasure, Brett. Thank you. And thank you for listening to Digital Coffee Marketing Brew. As always, please subscribe from your favorite podcasting apps to this podcast because we are doing it once a month, so never miss an episode that way. But join us next month as we talk to another great dollar in the the PR and marketing industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding if you're a freelancer, your business very well and love what you're doing and see you next week. Later.